good afternoon ladies and gentlemen we the members of the intercultural poetry and performance library are delighted to participate in this poetry cafe session at the kolkata edition of the valley of words or the wow festival i take this opportunity to introduce the intercultural poetry and performance library first the intercultural poetry and performance library is a non profit organization with certain objectives the first objective was to develop the idea of a poetry and performance library drawing on the model of the scottish poetry library in edinburgh the ipl as we call it intends to bring people poems and performances together nationally and internationally and is committed to bringing poetry to the heart of the nation the ipl wishes to attract as wide an audience as possible to access the pleasures benefits and social significance of poetry the ipl wants to nurture creativity and reading habits among the youth the ipl seeks to find ways of making poetry translations of poetry from different indian languages and performing arts vehicles of social progress and intercultural exchange the ipl endeavors to focus on intercultural exchanges that will inevitably showcase cultural diversity and inclusiveness today in this poetry cafe session of the wow festival the intercultural poetry and performance library is proud to present the city that lives in us i take pleasure in introducing the ippl poets of the city of kolkata the participant poets i request each one of you to please come and show yourself amit shankar shah he will read in the city of my joy amita roy she will read her poem starry nights ananya chatterjee you will find her reading her poem lost poet gopal lahiri gopal lahiri will read park street jagori mukherjee jagori's poem is titled homecoming madhur shivastav she will read a place i visited navmalati niyog chakravarti she will read my city kolkata pronab ghosh his poem is titled the lovers park rajoshi patranovish a poem titled kolkata shaktaparna roy she will read unknown and sufia khatun she will read distilled footprints on the ghats so today we have 11 poets with 11 poems and the poems have been glued together as a collage by my beautiful and talented co-coordinator thank you shongyata sanyal and I am Tanya Chakravarti and once again I say we the IPPL poets and performers are proud and delighted to present the city that lives in us Amar shohor amar golpo shohore byastotar olinde roj namchar uthone manusher mouno mukhorotay bheshe jay kauke bolte lage na shei kotha যে কান পেতে রয় সে অমনি শুনতে পায় দ্য সিটি 
has stories about each one who lives in it. The city itself becomes a story for them, a character, a companion. Today, we are here to tell you about such a city in our mind that we live every moment in real or in memory. We are individuals with different perceptions, thoughts, and the city takes a different shape inside us. In our poems, you will find the story of that city and its everydayness that rise up to any poet's wonder. The city that we speak about is Kolkata, where people come and go, yet they stay. Either they stay forever or they carry on carrying the city within. The city and the poet mingle into one. A place I visited intermittently since childhood for shopping in Newmarket for sightseeing at Victoria, Nehru Children's Museum, Planetorium, a day full of people, food and sights, Calcutta held my dreams. British Council at Theatre Road became my literary abode. My visitations bemused her. She invited me to settle in. Now Kolkata became my workplace. I travel daily to its belly crossing the Howrah Bridge, daily to and from an elemental commute, refreshed even in packed bus, teeming people walking on the sides of the history-embedded bridge. So strong the pull, like a lover's look, I settled on in, north of the city, did make my home, the underground rails did enter into its entrails, connecting opposite ends, Girish Park, Park Street, Nondon, Jadavpur, Hazra to Gyanmanj. I travelled and absorbed. My horizons widened. The city became my own, my pulse and pride. Its crowds, its hawkers, its mindless furor, its colonial monuments, its plush shopping malls its brigade ground, its race course, national library ground, am spread everywhere in Chai and Kati rolls, in Magnolia, Flores, Indian Museum and Zoo. All exude charm. Its attraction has enthralled many, Ghalib, Hastings to Taslima Nasreen. A city all embracing, where rich and poor reside like the rose and the thorn hewn into one. Thank you. Yes, it is this city as it moves with us, at places we go to, a spirit that spins stories incessantly like its own rain, its monsoon, its searing summer, or in the urbanity of its springtime. Evening lights put its words into the world of whistles, each verse reaching out to the sky, pouring out stars as if the world is a seashell. The festoons, colored papers, charge bells, exploring the allure of collecting from inside out in search of a new vocabulary. Periodic rumbles of cars on the street, a low hum wafting across the open windows, the shadow draws the childhood sparklers. A leaf tumbles from its very branch, and then the applause of the unknown birds starring the night life. Always inside the joy and color of love to talk out of turn, and when the night sings very close, the moment humming in the air, the song will move on. A voice from a past at once distant, close at hand, white flowers drop unspoken words in the crowded 
Park Street. Among the people at the nooks and corners of the buildings, lanes, alleys, the unheard melodies are caught by anyone who can feel the pulse. The city breathes. My city, Kolkata, never take reproof with equanimity. She has in her the intensity of a crusader's zeal. In a gentle, unhurried flow of life, huge strains of a reserve pepper the air. This is the story of an electrifying Bengal city. And it's matter not to speak of the British creation. What matters, though, is that she is now an intense experience. Beyond the reeling height of a Burj Khalifa pandal built at Tribhumi, it is a city that breathes with warmth. It is a city which pulsates and thinks. It is a city where the carpet is not pulled straight from under your feet. We still worship it at Kaligat and visit the new market despite bright tinsel glitter of the latest shopping malls of the city. Marriage feast here are traditionally treasured to memory, and Durga Puja celebrations are regaled for days. The weight of authoritarian pressure here never brush off any teeming sense of logic. Cosmopolitan folks never deal with problems head on, though eloquence here is undeniable. Here we hold in high regard Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, we, who taught us that virtue is not a matter of price. In a gentle, unhurried flow of intelligent life, living here is itself a learning experience. You may catch a breeze or a violent storm, but a relaxed adda at coffee house is the norm. I will hold you forever in the city's arms, closer to all that you have come to hold dear, weaving a permanent romance, a love for the city that's forever. The city has such ubiquitous spaces Parks, lanes, streets, terraces, all different, but they share the same sky that helps to create a tapestry, a singular story of that one city which lives in us. The darkness all around, the benches, the cool evening air, the seated figures hugging each other's soul and feeling an unworldly comfort. The dim light adding to the darkness around. The pangs, the shies of the shadowy figures. The agony of being close to each other and the ecstasy created by the illusion. The time indeed can stand still in the shade of the casual rainers planted by the walkways. At equal distance creating a net of secrecy underneath by the side and behind where they can lock lips and forget the pangs of fleeting time that separates excuse me separates their souls and their bodies as they long for the park with they turn into their homes without the limiting walls and the trees as their nets to hide themselves from the jealous stare of the civilization where they can return evening after evening to find solace to their bruised existence that struggles to survive in this slowed down world where prices, bills, taxes, 
rises higher than the tallest building in the city two blocks away and opposite to their lovely open air studio apartment. Thank you. I am someone. I stayed away for long, away from here, and I come back to where I belonged always. And I found time may have taken away a lot, but a lot of things remain as it is. They remain as they are, like eternity. Sixteen years. I find that the primary color is blue. Red is as rare as the sight of cherries here. I have, of course, grown, curves filled out, and so must drape myself in dark hues to recapture the erstwhile slender. Now, people wonder at the missing vermilion in the parting of my hair. Sixteen years, my childhood playmates have school-going children. My parents slouch and hobble. I browse shops for hair dyes. There are unfamiliar faces in the park. Sixteen years, I see College Street through my father's eyes. I have no memory. I try to connect turning strangers into acquaintances who know me not. I go for a boat ride on the Hooghly, a tourist in my birthplace. Outside my window, I am missing an Arabian Sea. Thank you. Ah, and the poet goes to the river, the heartline of the city, where the water and the ghats are like heartbeats I cannot live without. There's still footprints on the ghats. Over the bridge of the sainted new moon, I walk on the train tracks to an overbearing space. It is the evening of searching silence beyond and beneath my breath. Kazim sells a bunch of roses, white, white, near the traffic lights of Prince of God. He insists, he insists I shelter them before they fall. I hold them together, find why it eases sunken dreams. Its snowy petals fall on the pavement where he smiled, touched my temple. And I felt the waves of ashen Hoogly River merging with the mellowed lights of the boatmen returning to the ghats to when the boatmen left their distal footprints on the mud-washed stairs, lightning had marked the bosom of Hoogly. Mirror in the Prussian sky paved the brisk walk in the bubble space of my heart. The crumbling shadows of the passengers may be lovers, mind you, may be lovers. On the stoic fading walls, tell me about the Maji looking for the moonbeam to capture for his beloved. Everything is alive on the ghats. Everything is alive on the ghats, speaking in the echoes of the coal eyes. Far where water meets waiting, I find a prayer of love. Neatly written, neatly written on the footprints of the cityscape. Thank you. The cityscape that has a sky, an old one, created with the sound and smell of our lives.
Hear the aroma of bale and chewy mingles tensely with chief atar as evening sets a stir. Damsels with painted face wait for baits. Their lascivious curves hide no mystery to be unraveled to the pitiless starry nights. In the bar of faint lovers, a sordid room is scripted a tale on the painted mask. Darkness of night seeps in drudgery. Each famished cell taught. A rare night hatches a forbidden dream, an erratic bubble to die at dawn. Night trickle and loiter in this narrow lane, rake up fleeting gusts of pain and desire, while the muddy sweat on the bed, the unlit stove in the corner, the dying aroma of pale and dewy, wafting in languor, churn out a hackneyed prose. Thank you. Oh, indeed, that hackneyed prose, as the poet lover feels the city to be, it is an old one. I told you, things fall apart, yet there is a strange power about it, like the age of experience, and it remains the city of joy. The city where I come from is a moth-eaten memory, a torn piece of sepia smell smuggled from a Jewish bakery, a faint taste of frantic sound of a rushing hand-drawn rickshaw, the metallic clang of the door of a old black and yellow taxi. When I go back to the city of my memories, I find no inhabitants there. The city is filled with buildings of nostalgias, windows of remembrances, rooms of recollections, and stores of reminiscences. Bacon said, a great city is a great solitude. In this city, I shoot solitudes that scoot and run and disappear in streets and lanes and by lanes. In this city, sound pretends to be heard when I leave a song at the door of sleep. What difference does it make if in this city I don't dwell? In this city of forgotten taste, in this city of leftover smells, in the city of vanishing addresses, except that it is now the city that dwells in me, and I am its only citizen. The city has obvious signs of decrepitude. Mornings are hoary often, nights are no less, yet the vibes spread unmatched colors. Their tinges and hues stay on at the corners of the hearts, like punctuations in poetry. The nebula of Shamapuka is in the air. We are pacing towards the light, colliding, clashing, each particle in infinity, as the city drapes itself in LED neon. Kali, you devour all lights with your deep darkness, all-consuming. Even Shiva lays his body of light at your dancing feet. You clutch the sundered head, dripping. The seeds of blood do not drop on the ground of my city. 
the ravenous fox sucks it. The sulfur in the skies chokes new life in the silence of deafening sounds. I can hear the echo of the cosmic in the alleys of my city. My mind inflates. In this populated universe, the Tara-studded azure, the dark brighter than the light. I absorb the heat and the wave as I explore the lanes of my city, the dark enigma emitted in myriad black forms. I gravitate. The unknown explodes with the folds of some four lakh years on my skin. I behold the magnitude of being. There is a strange beauty in the broken, the oddity of being strong with fissures spreading like veins. The city heaves such a power that the poet never misses while he spins odes. नकाब जो पहना रहता हूँ मुझे बेनकाब करके तो देख वही रूखा सा आशिक हो आज भी। I was not one of you, you adopted me. I have never adjusted with you, you adapted me. Learn to fall in love with you, broken heart, bleeding mind, false joyhood, unscathed agony, hidden. A failure is what I am. A failure is what I am. As they say, living away from you is success. I have failed to be away. As they also say, you have to be hated. Dirt, filth, protests, brothel. I fail here too. How can I? How can I hate you? You are the one in whom is buried characters of my evolved negative self. You complete me. Catalyst of vibrancy. You are the twilight that hopes for a spicy night. You are the one to absorb my ever weary body, to house my soul, my heartbreak, my love, my lust, my dementia. My clairvoyance, hand in glove, with you through darknesses, Kolkata. Thank you. And in its fissures, prosaic pains, smiles, there is a poetry that rings our senses, our sensibility, our being. We become the city, the city, us. There are places I cannot go back to. A city where I shred my tanned dead cells and left gurgling pearls of liquid laughter. A room half-lived, wardrobes smelling of unwashed, unworn, lovesick clothes, a washed up turning brown with time, a lake where the sun drowned each dusk and the moon winked on from behind monuments, a city to which I lost my heart, a scar that never quite seems to dry, only, only a train ride away and yet, yet so far I cannot find my way my way back to those winding, moonless alleys where a pair of eyes had held me first. Sidewalks, sidewalks smelling of an ancient kiss. Some journeys cannot be repeated. Some places never, never to be revisited. Some distances mustn't be measured by miles, only, only by hours, only by decades. A city I lost, a city 
I loved, fossilized forever in the mist of time. And thus, the story of our city continues in us, in our lives, in our memories, fossilized, yet breathing. Thank you. Um,